All right, Shalom. I want to start off with giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, the bonus to the apostles. He nailed us a great millstone. Peace and salutations to the whole free elect. I want to start off in the book of Genesis, chapter 9, verse 8. And the Most High spake unto Noah and his sons with him, saying, And I behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and with every living creature that is with you, of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of, of the earth with you, from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. And I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood, neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. And the Most High said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, that I may remember the everlasting covenant between the Most High and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Okay? So, you know, this is what the bow in the heavens or in the clouds represent. Okay? A covenant between the Most High, you know, that the Most High said he wasn't going to flood the earth anymore with waters again. Okay? And, uh... When you think about it today, is how everything has been so distorted, distorted by Esau Edom, which is the so-called white man. That when nowadays, when these young children, you know, when they see, you know, the, the rainbow symbol, okay, the rainbow flag, <clears throat> they're automatically in their mind think of a people whom consider themselves, you know, homosexual, lesbians. Um, even it's, it's even going to the going as far as, you know, transgenders. You know that whole alphabet community. You know, and when they you know see this this you know the the, the representation of the rainbow in today's society, this is what they'll think of. But it really goes back to the biblical standpoint. The bow, the rainbow, really goes back to the biblical standpoint that the Most High made the covenant, okay, that he wouldn't flood the earth anymore, okay? That's what that represents, okay? And I was just, you know, I'm bringing this out because I was just meditating. And, uh, you know, you think about especially this, this Generation Z, today so we call these gmo babies but the generation z that's running around here on the earth today you know and and the ones that is you know still continuing to to, to grow up into you know uh you know kindergarten uh kindergarten um you know uh kindergarten is you know school ages you know when they see this flag you know they look at it in a rep they look at it as in they look at it as the representation which E uses it for, okay? Because on the right-hand side, dealing with Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you know, this was set up for the covenant that was made, okay, that the Heavenly Father won't flood the earth again. But E just, you know, took it and used it as we're going to use this to, you know, establish, you know, push forth, this 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 alphabet vibration throughout the earth and this is the this is the symbol we're going to use we're going to use you know the colors of the rainbow okay meanwhile the heavenly father already set it up that the bow you know which is is very beautiful when you look when you look at a rainbow when it's you know uh going you know you might even see it piercing the clouds or however you might see it you might catch the 
you know, the first angle or the second angle, or you might even see the whole thing. You know, I've seen, seen it all. I've seen, you know, every you know, angle of a pour. It's beautiful, you know. But this was for the setup of the Lord making that covenant that he wouldn't flood the earth no more. But E distorted it. And this is what E does. This is the point. This is what E does. He takes things that are, you know, things that were created to be righteous. Okay. Created to be right, righteous. And what? He distorts it. Okay. Why? Because he is a mad scientist. I'm just a scripture that I'm thinking of. Um, uh, turn to evil. Let's see if we can find it. Uh, All right. Because the scriptures also say, you know, the things that the Lord have made. You know, people have took it and created it to be something that is evil. All right, let's see. Um, okay, boom. Ecclesiastes chapter 39, verse 27. All these things are for good to the godly, so the sinners they are, so to the sinners they are turned to evil. Let's go a little bit more into this, okay? Mm. No, I don't. Let's start at verse... 25 says for the good are good things created from the beginning so evil things for sinners the principal things for the whole use of man's life are water fire iron and salt flour and wheat honey milk and the blood of the grape and oil and clothing all these things are for good to the godly so to sinners they are turned into evil okay so the heavenly father already set everything up you know, things as it should be. Okay. But what man has turned around and did, especially Esau, Edom. All right. Him, especially, you know, they, they have took these things that were created to had the, you know, uh, had its beautiful purpose and, and turned it upside down. Okay. Use it for wicked practices. And Jake, Jake had, you know, Jake is our fault in a lot of this too, you know, Turn the things that the Lord have created that was to, to, to be right and that was beneficial, you know, for the purpose of what the Lord created it for and used it for a wicked practice. You see? But we're talking about Esau Edom here, the you know, the master of disaster. All right, and we and dealing with this, you know, the bow. Okay, the rainbow. All right, now when people look at it, and I and I thought about this of these younger children that's coming up the school ages of now when they look upon this this is what they're going to think their mind is going to think okay the alphabet community the wicked alphabet community instead of thinking of okay this this bow in the clouds this rainbow was created because the lord said he would not he made a covenant that he would not flood the earth again you see but they're not going to look at it in that aspect they're going to look at it as the wicked invention that he came up with okay and this is just another reason why he got to be destroyed. All right. Um, let's, I want to get um, the second Peter. Let's try that. Second Peter 1. The one. No, it might be two. Lockia Fire All right, so let's go to Second Peter chapter. Yeah, Second Peter chapter three. It says, "Let's start at verse three. It says, knowing this first that there shall be there there shall come in the last days scoffers, 
walking after their own lust. And this is what you have at an all-time high as well. You got scoffers, you know, scoffers, mockers that, you know, mock the messengers of the Lord, okay, which are the prophets, you know, and truly who they are, who are they mocking? They're mocking Yahweh Bashim Yahweh okay, because see, we're just vessels of the Lord whom he is using to speak his word as he, as he did in it in the, in the days of old, right? Verse four, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation, this is the mindset they had that they have, you know, uh, these things been going on. People been saying that my great, great, great grandparents said, you know, the earth was going to be destroyed by fire. You know, this is the mindset. These things y'all been saying, they ain't going to happen in our time. Right. This is what they this is what they say. Verse five it says for this, they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of the most high. The heavens were of old. In the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. You see? This is what happened. This is what took place. Okay? And it said these people were what? Being wicked. Verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. And perdition of ungodly men. So everything that is kept in store now, the world that we live in right now, is reserved unto fire against the day of judgment. And this is what's about to come up on this place. Okay, we we speak about this all the all the time of what's coming to America, Babylon, and Great. You know, and we talk about the missiles that's going to be shot off via World War Three. Uh, you know, via these other nations, and World War Three is going to take place, and you people. You know, you, you just, you mock, okay? But you're just doing what you were programmed to do, you know, of being an unbeliever, being a scoffer, being a mocker, okay? So I read it again, it says, but the heavens of the, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, you know, I was talking about that. Uh, you know, the, the judgment that's about to be poured upon this place, which is going to be by what fire, nuclear destruction. When the scriptures talk about it, seeing this place as a lake of fire. You know, this is talking about what it's going to look like. And when you're, you know, if you was to look at an aerial view of a place that had been, you know, totally just decimated and, and nuked. Okay, it's going to look like what? A lake of fire. You know, that, that's what you're going to see if you're in an aerial view. Which, who are going to be able to see that? Well, you know, the elect that's in these chariots, in the chariots, okay? The sea of glass, so to speak. So verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but it's long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So look, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. The scriptures also talk about, you know, uh, you know, everything is due in its season. Okay? It says to the purpose on up. Oh, I just gotta get it. I gotta get it. Let's get I'll get two of them. All right. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 it says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven okay so everything got its due time of when it's to take place okay Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 it says for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry, you see? So these things, you know, that are mentioned in the scriptures via prophecy are going to take place. But it's everything is done at the Lord's time, right? Now, when we go to the book of Isaiah chapter 55. Verse 11, I'm just going to get the point. So shall my word be that go forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall but it shall accomplish 
that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So whatever the Lord say, that's what's going to go forth. And it says it's going to accomplish. Okay? Meaning it's going to be done. It's going to be fulfilled the way that he wants it to be done. All right? So when you go back into... Um, Second Peter uh, Is that what was that? Yeah, Second Peter chapter three verse nine again it says, For the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us were, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come in repentance. And see, this is why we're on the highways and byways as well. Okay, while we're under this grace period, you know, we're bed into the marriage. Okay, As the scripture says, you know, go bed to the go to the highways and byways and bid them to come in. Roughly paraphrasing, and that's what we are doing. Okay, we're we're calling out. You know, as that's this goes into the word uh, church in the Greek ecclesia, meaning to call out. So we're calling out, and only the elect is coming in. As the scripture says, the sheep shall hear my voice. You see, so the elect is coming in, you know, but everyone else is still being uh, spiritually tagged, so to speak, uh, spiritually given, you know, uh, a ticket. OK, they're being given a ticket, you know, but these people are not coming to the show. You know, by the time they try to come to the show, what is it going to be? It's going to be expire. OK, up. You know, your show starts at 9 o'clock, okay? And you arrive at, you know, 11, 11 o'clock, you know? Sorry, sorry, sir, the show is over, you know? Oh, well, you know, can I just, can I catch the next show? Nah. You know, it was only valid for that specific time, okay? I could see, you know what I mean? That's it. You know, but the scripture says, but that all should come to repentance. So that's what we do, we preach. You know, yeah, we, we, we preach we preach the whole gospel. Okay, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know? We preach it all. But it's the hope for you to what? To repent and return back to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay. So that's it. I just thought I'd touch on that to the spirit as I was just meditating and thinking of like, man, you know, these these young kids, you know, school age kids now. When they look at look at the you know, the symbol, you know, of the rainbow that E has put up, so to speak, they think of this, you know, this madness. But truly, it goes back to something you know, uh, deeper, you know, biblical uh, of the Lord not flooding the earth with water again. Okay, let's read that one more time. Uh, let's just type this in. Genesis 9 verse 16 it says and the bow shall be in the cloud and I will look upon it that I may remember the ever everlasting covenant between the most high and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth you see and the most high said unto Noah this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth all right so yeah that's really that's pretty much the point you know, of, you know, of the Lord not flooding the earth. I mean, the bow, you know, was set in the heavens that the Lord made a covenant that he wasn't going to uh, cover between. How you doing? <laughs> What's up? It's <laughs> lucky.